Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And on screen we have what I think is going to be an absolutely brutal classic Sudoku that's been constructed for us. And uh, I have to confess we've been sitting on this puzzle for a while. Uh, it's by the, um, the constructor Derek Neal, who some of you, if you've been with the channel a long time, will recognise the name of because Derek is... Um, he invented a technique for solving Sudoku called the slot machine. And we did a couple of videos on that technique way back in the day. And Derek um, also is a constructor, obviously, as you can see on the screen. And he features some of his puzzles feature in our classic Sudoku app. Um, so we're well, very familiar with, um, with Derek's puzzles. Um, and he sent this one in um, a month or so ago. And I sent it off to Mark to test. Mark tested it. And, um, well, when I say tested it, I think he required several bifurcations to finish it and described it as absolutely monstrously hard. Now, anyway, very occasionally on the channel, we, we do do Sudokus that are monstrously difficult. And I'm going to attempt this one for you today. If I fail miserably, you'll never see this video because it will just go into the ever-expanding blooper reel uh, that sit on my hard drive. Um, but hopefully you will see it because hopefully I will find a way through. If you want to have a go, click on the link under the video as always. Um, so just to mention, um, self-isolation, we know that it is a trial. Um, we're finding it a trial as well. Um, but we are trying to keep everyone's spirits up by doing more videos at the moment than we would otherwise do. And Mark is going to be doing a video today as well on the Star Battle Puzzle. So look out for that late, late tonight UK time. Uh, there will be some Star Battle Puzzles um, to solve on the channel. One of my favourite types. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, this month's Patreon reward is out. I mentioned that in yesterday's video. And if you haven't done the puzzle from yesterday's video, do revisit it uh, or do visit it for the first time because um, Sir Wozel's puzzle is an absolutely beautiful puzzle. Not terribly difficult, but just exceptionally elegant with some lovely logic in it. So I definitely recommend uh, yesterday's video if you haven't tried the puzzle. Uh, and with that, let's just get on with this. Let's get cracking and see how we do. Um, now, I have been warned by Mark, this is monstrous, so I'm going to be employing all techniques, which means there'll be a lot of notation, I imagine, in this grid. Um, oh, I've got a digit. There's a two there. Um, nine's here, look. Not, oh, I've got another digit, nine there. Maybe, maybe it's going to be easy after all. I doubt it. Um, uh, there's another digit, there's an 8 down there. I was expecting not to get anything for a while, so I'm feeling I'm feeling bullish. Oh, I've got another digit, there's a 7. Okay. Slowing down now. I suspect it's about to get very tough. We can pencil 4s though down there, let's do that. 7s can be penciled into one of those two squares. This 3 can be pencil marked into those two squares, which places a 3 in one of those two positions in box 4. It's an interesting pattern of givens, isn't it? Look at this. Look at Yeah, it's really nice. We've got 1s, 2s and 3s going down the grid, 4s, 5s and 6s going down the grid. 7, 8, and 9 going down the grid. And this, this sort of toroidal property where this 9 pokes back in the other side. And then the bottom three rows are all very, very different. Anyway, that's a, that's a, that's a nicety. It's not what I should be looking at. So let's carry on. Um, Twos must be in one of these two squares. That's these twos interacting. Uh, sorry about this.
I'm not sure. I'm not sure how monstrous this gets immediately. It, it looks like I'm grinding to a halt now. So we're going to have to start looking for more advanced patterns. I'm just going to check this row because we've got five digits in it. Three, four, five, and six to place. This square can only be a five or a six. That square can only be a three or a four. I guess I will pencil mark that in as four, five, and six as well. Seven in one of those two squares. I'm looking at threes. The reason I'm looking at threes is I'm looking at this three and I've noticed that the threes in Yeah, there you go. There is a pattern on threes. There. Nice. Right, let's look at this. So this is a swordfish pattern straight off the bat. Um, what is a swordfish and how did I spot it? Well, I spotted it by looking, I was looking at threes and I noticed that the threes in this column had a parallel here. Now at that point I hadn't scanned these top three rows of the grid at all. All I'd seen was that there was a mirror symmetry in these threes. But when I did scan up, I realized it wasn't quite perfect because this three rules out this square, but nothing is ruling out the top row for a three. So this is a third position for a three in the rows in column five. But if you don't give up hope and you continue to scan along the grid and look at the other columns, you can see this column exhibits a very similar pattern. The three can go in either of these two squares, it can't go here, and it can't go here. So it must be, well, how can we describe this? The three is in a subset of three rows in three different columns of the grid. Now, what does this mean? Well, what this means is that in these columns, these columns here, there will always be a three in one position. So if this was a three, for example, then we'd either end up with a three here and a three here, or a three here and a three here. Hopefully that's fairly clear. That's absolutely forced, isn't it? If this is a three, these are the only two remaining options for the threes in column two and column eight. What happens if this isn't a three? Well, if this isn't a three, this will be a three. And therefore, there are only two possible arrangements of threes in these cells here. We could have this arrangement, that would be one possibility, or this arrangement, that would be another possibility. Now, if you're paying attention, you might have noticed that in each of these arrangements of the grid, there was always a three in one of these two squares. There was always a three in one of these three squares, and there was always a three in one of these three squares. What that means we can do is we can look along these rows and eliminate threes from all of those yellow squares. Now, in some instances, that's going to be absolutely useless because this three, for example, is already ruling out many of the yellow squares uh, already. So let's try and just I'd have a quick stare at this and identify which which squares are affected by this swordfish pattern. Um, there are some, there's definitely, this one isn't, these aren't, this one is, I think, affected by it, this one is. So I think it's just those that are um, that are affected by the swordfish. So we need to look at these squares and see how they are reduced in terms of their possibilities. So let's just, I'll make them a different color so I don't have to keep remembering them. So this square can't be a three. What can it be? Can't be a one, can be a two, I think. Can't be a three, four, ah, oh, can't be four, five, or six, or three. Can't be a seven, can't be an A, ah, bother can be a nine. <laughs> I thought we were going to get a breakthrough, but no. Um, let's look at this one. So this can't be a one, two, or three, or four. I think it can be a five. 
I think it can be a 6. It can't be a 7, 8, 9. So this one's reduced a bit. Right, let's look down here at this square. Um, so this one can be a 1, I think. Can't be a 2. Can't be a 3 because of the swordfish. Can be a 4. Can't be 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. So that one is very reduced as well. And this one can't be 1, 2, or 3. I think it can be 4. Can't see why it can't be 5. Can't be 6, 7, 8, or 9. So we've managed to reduce 4 squares to being just a single choice um, by using this, this pattern. So that is useful maybe. So now we're going to have to spot something else. Um, let's have a look at this column because we've now we've reduced this this cell. The four digits we have are going to be more powerful than they were. So one, three, four, five and six. Ah, uh, this square maybe, yes, 1, 4 and 6 ruled out from this. So this can only be 3 or 5. This one can be 1, 4 or 5. And this one can be a myriad of things. Let's try this column. You can see we need 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So that's 1, 3 or 4. That one's 2, 3 or 5. That one's uh, one, three, or four. So there's two fives there and there. Uh, no, the only thing, the only reason I'm pausing here is I'm noticing that twos are locked into one of those two positions in column seven. And I'm just wondering whether I can do anything with that, but I can't see anything. So I'm going to try and remember that. That might come in, in handy later. Let's right, let's look at this column now. We've got uh, we've not got very many digits. We've got one, two, three, four, seven, and nine to place. So that square is restricted. Look, that can't be one, three, four, or seven. So this square has to be two or nine. Ah, that two or nine. Let me just double check that. One, two, three, four, seven, and nine. Yeah, that is right. Two or nine. So there's a two nine pair in this column. So how do we use that? So, th so this column is definitely the interesting one now because we've effectively got five digits placed in it. We now need to place um, one, three, four, and nine. So this is one, three, or nine. That one. No, hang on. Why did I say nine? It can't be nine. I'm going mad. One, three, four, or seven. Ooh, that was nearly a bad mistake. One, three, or seven here. One or seven here. So threes. Now we pause again while I try and work out what on earth to do next. Eight now we can pencil mark in this block look. Um, so we can pencil mark eights into those squares. Ah, and in fact twos also look. Yeah, this this not being able to be a two is nice because that locks a two into those squares. Now, yeah, this is good. This is good. We've got now look at those three squares. We've got the numbers two, eight, and nine pencil marked into those three squares. So these three squares are a two, eight, nine triple. Um, so let me just note that in. 
So these remaining squares are one, six, and seven. Um, must be a six in one of those two, because there can't be a six in that one. So there's now, oh, there's no, oh, there's, yeah, we can pencil sixes up there. Wow, wow. I thought we were really onto a good thing there, getting that triple, but we just aren't, are we? Or if we are, I can't see how we are. Twos in row six are locked into one of two positions by this two here and the fact there can't be a two. Yeah, let's look at this. So sorry about this. That I I realise this is must be very frustrating to watch, but. There's something going on with twos. Okay, let's look at this. So, yeah, these twos here. So, where can a two go in this box? Now, if we look carefully, there's an empty rectangle here because the two is locked into either row one here or column five one of these position one of those things must be true unless both of them are true if it's here obviously it's row five and column one but, but the way to think about this the way to spot it is to notice the twos down here and then look for patterns that hit this 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 two pair now so how, what can we say about this is it a useful pattern So either, if there's a two in column five, there would have to be a two in this square. That's forced. So this little square here can't ever be a two. Now, let's go through that again, just so that it's very clear. If I label the twos in this box, obviously if the twos are in row one, that square can't be a two. We'd all agree with that, that's very obvious. Now the only other position that could exist in this box is that the twos are vertical in column five. If they are in column five, this square can't be a two. And we know the two is in one of two positions in row six, so it has to be here, and therefore that square is not a two. So either way, this square is restricted and we need to look at it. So, Um, okay, so what can it? It can't be two, one, two. It could be a th ah, the three ah, is in the swordfish, so that's no good. So it can be a three. It can't be a four. It can be a five. Ah, it can be a five. And it can be a six, I think, as well. Botheration. Seven, eight, nine. No good. No good at all. That's disappointing. But, ah, but, 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 look, the twos in this box are also restricted. They, oh, twos are very restricted. In fact, the elimination of the two from here forces the two into one of those squares where it hits this one. So this can no longer be a two, the two moves upwards.
Okay, so is that useful? That is the question. What are we meant to appreciate from that? This square not being able to be a two, let's check it out. What can it be? It can't be, a, it can be a one, it can't be two, three, four, five, or six, or seven. Ooh, that can only be a one or an eight. Now that might be interesting. Why is that interesting? I'm going to check this uh, column one, three, four, five, and six to place. So this square is four or five. I suppose I can label that three, four, or six. That can't be a seven. I've got a seven here. Why did I think that could be a seven? So the seven, seven can only go in two positions in row five. Seven is locked into one of those two square. Yeah, oh, yes. Okay, so there is an, <laughs> I'm running out of colors here. There is an X wing on sevens. Let's look at this. So if we look at um, uh, row five, ask where the seven can go. It can only go in the red squares. Every other square is ruled out by those three sevens there. Now, if we look at the same thing in row three, this can't be a seven, this can't be a seven, and this seven rules out those two squares. So we know that in row three and row five, the seven is locked into a red square. Therefore, we know when we look at the finished solution, there will either be a seven here and a seven here. That's one possibility. Or, if this is not a 7, we know for certain this has to be. There will be 7s like that. So again, we're able to say with certainty there is either a 7 here or a 7 here. And there is either a 7 here or a 7 here in the finished solution. Which means we can eliminate 7 from the rest of these columns. Now, I'm only going to highlight the cells that are... Oh, let's see. There's only, in fact, two cells this matters for at all. These are the only two cells that aren't already seen by the seven that are eliminated by the X-wing. So let's look at this one. Uh, this can't be... Uh, so what can this be? In fact, let's ask ourselves that question. This could be a one. It can't be two. It can't be three, four, five, six. It can't be seven because of the X-wing. Ah, it can, can't be eight can be nine, can't it? Oh, but it can be nine, but that that is a different pattern. Let's come up, we'll come back to this. There is a Y wing there, hidden triple, or sorry, a bent triple is what I like to call that. So we'll come back to that in a sec. Let's just check this position, because this also can't be a seven. One, two, three, can be a four, I think. Can be a five, can't be a six, can't be a seven could be an eight. Uh, I can't see anything better than that. Right, so let's come back up here. So if we had, if we looked at these three squares here and they were all in the same column, we would be happy days. We would know exactly what that meant. We'd have a triple on the numbers one, eight, and nine, and we would eliminate the numbers one, eight, and nine from the rest of that column. 
but these are not aligned in the same column they are bent but the critical thing here is to recognize that there is one cell one of these three cells sees two of the others and it's this one this cell sees both this square and this square and therefore there is still some logic we can do here and in fact the logic is going to give us a digit at last because if this is a one this square here has to be an eight now the only other position that could exist in the finished solution is that this is not a one but we know if it's not a one it's a nine which means this square would be an eight so in the finished solution there must be an eight either in this square or in this square so this square cannot be an eight because it's either going to see that one or that one and therefore this square is a two now that hopefully you can see immediately this is going to give us some some headway here so it, i'm just going to take this slowly so that i don't mess up anything that's a two that's a two Uh, okay, I think that's everything we get. No, it's not. This is a two as well, isn't it? So that gives us all of the twos now finished. But when we place the two here, we also took the pencil mark position of an eight. So this must be an eight. So that's an eight down there now. An eight in one of those two squares. And obviously in placing this eight, we took the pencil mark of a nine. So that's a nine. And well, that really doesn't give us much at all. You're kidding me. No, sorry guys, I can't. <laughs> I think this is, our trail has run cold. I don't believe it. Okay, so we need three, five, and six. Ah, so this can only be a five or a six. This one can be anything. I don't believe it. Um, okay, what am I missing now? Four, five here. What can this square be? One, three, four, or five. One, four, or five. So let's put that in and see if that tells us anything. Nothing. Oh, but, but, this square can't be a 7, 8 or a 9. So, look at this New York Times trick coming up. Column 3. Obviously, these three squares can't be 7, 8 or 9 because there's a 7, 8 and 9 in the box. So where are we going to put a 7, 8 and 9 in column 3, given we can't put 7, 8 or 9 in this square? They're going to have to go in those three squares. That is a hidden triple. This can't be a 9. This can't be a 7. This one can't be an 8. Um, so what, if anything, does that tell us? I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. Um, let's look at this row. Let's finish it off. So this square, one, two, three is impossible. Four is possible. Five is possible. Six is not possible. Seven and eight are both possible. I 
can't see why not. So, so this square, one, four, five, seven, eight. This can't be four or five at least, so or eight actually. So this can be one. What am I looking for? One, four, five, seven, and eight. So this can only be. This can only be one or seven triple here. Oh, this is this is good. This is good. Yeah, this is good. So let's look at these three squares. And again, we can do exactly the same trick here that we did with those three squares before we we got this one. So this square sees both of them. So this is another bent triple on the numbers one, seven, and nine. So how do we resolve it? Well, if this is a 1, this will be a 7. If this is a 9, this will be a 7. So there's a 7 in one of these two squares. So this square here can't be a 7. Um, and neither can that one, actually, because that also sees this square and this square. So this can't be a 7. That's going to give us a 7 here. And this can't be a 7. And look, we've got penciled sevens in here. So once I know this is not a seven, this is a seven. Therefore, this is a seven. Therefore, this is a seven. Now, now this is a seven as well. Obviously, for that's unwinding the X wing. Um, and we, in fact, we've done all the sevens, I think. One six pair here, so this can't be a one. That shifts the one up there. This square has to be has to be a three or a four. There's a trick. There is a trick. This three four pair. Look, I like this. I don't know what this is called. Um, I, cause I sort of think of it as a as a crank handle type trick, um, but look, we have threes and fours in the this. These are the only two positions in row five that the three and four can go into. But the interesting thing is this four five sort of uh, spur coming off this this line. So what we can say here is that if this is a four. This square here has to be a 5. But if this square is not a 4, then the only other place a 4 can go in row 5 is going to be that square. And that will force this square to be a 5. So one of these cells has to contain a 5. So that one can't contain a 5. And why is that important? Well, I've now got a 1, 3, 4 triple in column 7, so this square is a 5. And that sees this square, look. So now this square must be a 5. No. No, the... I can't believe it. I'm still, it's still not falling over. No. I don't believe it. Right, three, this square can be three, four or six. Looking at the row, we've got a very colourful, very pencil marked grid here. Oh, I, hang on, I know what we can. Yes, I know what we can do here. We can use this 3 4 again, but this time we're going to use it in the empty rectangle. So look at this box. Where can a 4 go? The four here means it cannot go in row one. So there is only those three squares that can take a four. So one possibility of the finished solution is that one of these two squares will be a four. If that's true, that square must be a one. 
The only other position that can exist in this box is that the 4 is in one of those two squares. If the 4 is in one of those two squares, it hits this square look. And we know there are only two positions for a 4 in row 5, so this square would have to be a 4. That would eliminate that from being a 4. So this square is a 1. Every digit is like... It's, it's, it's so difficult, this puzzle. Um, now, this is a 1. Please let me have cracked it now. Um, this one obviously is C. I have seen that it's seeing this 8. I'm just checking the rest of it. Um, this has got to be a 4 or a 5. This square now has to be an 8. Shifts the 8 up there. Um, there must be a 4 in one of those two squares, which means this can't be a 4. So the 4 must be in one of those two squares, I think. And in fact, we've got, uh, we've got the 8 we can remove from there as well. So this becomes a 4-5 pair. Uh, this 3 removes... Why do I think that could only be a 3 or a 6? Has that been sitting there for a while? That can't be a 6. So this square must be a 6. So one of these two squares must be a... 6 as well. Shifts this to be a 5. That to be a 1. This to be a 4. That forces this to be a 4. This to be a 3. This to be a 6. This to be a 5. I don't dare say anything, but I'm hoping that we might be on the finish, finishing straight now. This 7 sees this 8. Fixes that to be a four, three, five, four, five. These two squares you can see have to be three and four, so that must be in that order. That fixes the three and the six. That fixes that this is a six, nine pair and this should be a one. That's going to be useful. One, six now. Six, nine. That forces this one to be the nine. 3, 1, this is a 6, 3 must be here, a 3 must be here, now hopefully that can be a 4, I think it can, 8 and 9, yeah, <laughs> whoa, I'm not unhappy with that, it's taken me just under 40 minutes and that was difficult man that was difficult let me know in the comments how you got on let me know how i did i i suspect towards the end there i messed up a bit um it looked like them i i might have had the opportunity to put in some easier digits but at least i got through it and i don't think that is um i didn't bifurcate so i'm pleased with that um yeah come back for star battle which i'm sure is going to be easier than that later on tonight and we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.